after year came Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. I can see the glory of the Lord all over and everywhere. I can see the glory of the Lord all over and everywhere. I can see angels all around. Who oh, we give you praise, Jesus? Yeah. You are great, you are great, you are great, God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, it's so big, it's so big, oh, it's so big. Oh, Lord, it's so big, it's so big, oh, it's so big. Cause
this morning. Are you right, the people of God? Somebody say one God. My goodness. You know, this year is a year of girth. And this month is a month of one God. So one God equals girth. Are you ready to know this morning? People shout one God. My goodness, Lord, we give you praise up. Yela bado sitele bragada bado shaha. Hey, holua hetobi. Hetobi o hetobi. Hele bado shaha. Holua hetobi. Hetobi o hetobi. O sana tale fi shaka weira o hetobi. O sana tale fi shaka weira o hetobi. Holua. Lord, we worship you. Holua. You. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Thank you for making us gods. Thank you for making us priests. Thank you for making us kings. Unto you, unto you, unto the only true God. Lord, we exalt your name, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Isaiah 33, 22 in MSG quickly. Liba garabo shete. Libarada no shene mana mana mo shete. Tell the three twenty two. Libarada no shata. Lord, we give you praise. Libarada no shete le break any mashala bagada badosh. Libarada shala babaha. The Bible says, for God makes all the decision here. Somebody say, God makes my decision. God is our king. God runs this place and he will keep us safe. Somebody say, I am in the city of God. Can you show the Lord is my father? The Lord is my judge. The Lord is my king. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to God in this Universal Kingdom Sunday. So beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you, Minister Oyenda, for that beautiful, beautiful edification and the choir. Lift your right hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We are ready for you this day. We are ready for you. Ready for the blessing. We declare King of Kings, your word enlightens our eyes of understanding and finds absolute expression and your dominion reigns supreme in our spirits. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Everybody say, I see Jesus. Now, you know, we can't really touch people around here, so just look around and say, you are blessed being around me. You are blessed, you know. Glory to God. By tomorrow, we're going to await the next announcement of the government, and then we can make our next set of um, announcements. So 
uh, just be on the lookout uh, in some of the summer cast we're going to bring out the announcements just before and before the uh, next Friday service by God's grace and you know by this time it's supposed to be exactly a week to just praise universe anniversary um, and the church anniversary but we are just going to wait because we already told you that there's going to be some kind of mini anniversary or just hold a normal show when when everybody can come around in full and we're going to have the main anniversary i tell you all the teams are ready we're just waiting for the atmosphere to be right and the announcements to be right glory to god because of um, the fact that today is the last sunday of the month quickly let's get back to our theme scripture in ephesians chapter 4 and um, in verse number six you see it's one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all everybody say amen. amen one god why did we talk about one god one god because there are too many gods everywhere there are too many gods in the churches there are too many gods in the hearts of christians the bible even says in the book of ezekiel that he will answer them according to the idols they have in their hearts so which means gods are in people's hearts in uh, st matthew's gospel chapter number 15 st matthew's gospel 15 i gotta read to you from verse number seven you will see what's going on in people's hearts he says ye hypocrites well did desires prophesy of you saying these people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips but their heart is far from me but in vain they do worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men and he called the multitude and said unto them hear and understand not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man but that which cometh out of the mouth this defileth a man then came his disciples and said unto him knowest thou that the pharisees were offended after they heard this saying one of the things people consider when they want to preach is who is going to be offended or not i am not in that category probably many years ago i used to be concerned about what someone is going to feel about what i say and this is one of the reasons i don't like going to be guest minister in anybody's church because most times they are going to be offended by what you say i was telling my wife a few days ago that my father went to preach in a church and once he was done preaching the reverend of the church came and said he took the microphone and said all the things reverend normally he said now are true but we are not accepting them that was rather blunt that was rather blunt so many preachers don't like you touching their folks because they they gathered that church with a lot of suit saying and so once there's no more suit saying the people are going to leave I am never afraid of any message that to preach in the church and to be afraid whether the folks are going to come next week or not. I'm not bothered about that. Because once you start saying and sweet talking, I mean, the media team came to me one time that somebody sent us a message that our words were too hard. I said, then you bear them. That was what they told Jesus in St. John's Gospel 6. When the words are heard, hard, um, and don't be concerned for me, for the people. Be concerned for yourself. If it's not too hard for you, keep listening bother less about the people because I don't bother about the people because I'm going to give you very hard words today as they are in scripture I, I don't really say anything of myself I say things as I read them to you from scripture many people like to say things you know and I think one of these days I'm going to come to talk to you about sound doctrine sound doctrine because I mean the look what the disciples of Jesus went to tell him come on folk give me that verse verse 12 then came his disciples and said unto him knowest that that the pharisees were offended after they heard this saying who is offended people who don't have authority the bible says he did not teach as the pharisees he spoke as one that had authority people who don't heal the sick why are you concerned for weaklings just because they put on some regalia and they are the leaders of the so-called synagogue or whatever no the truth the bible says in second corinthians 13 verse 8 it says you cannot do anything against the truth the truth will always be, always be strong jesus said i am the way the truth just before the service mother was talking to me uh <laughs> you know that the reason many churches won't say the truth is because the, the the truth is not what they preach they don't preach christ they can't stand the truth so they won't say it they say other things 
but not what it is. And really, the question you need to ask yourself every time you hear any preaching, what is this word going to make me? Jesus said, I did not come to condemn the world. No. Paul said, knowing the terror of God, we warn all men. Because we know the terror that is coming. 2 Corinthians 5 and verses 10 and 11. See? So, the disciples said all, the, all those things. Now, in verse 13, go to verse 13 quickly, folk. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders or be blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Doth not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth or out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Everybody read verse 19 for me. Come on. For out of the heart, evil thoughts, uh huh, murders, uh huh, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness. Isn't this the heart that was far from God? Why are you not talking to me now? This is the heart that was far from God in verses 8 and 9. The heart that is far from God is the heart that has what? Thefts. Go back there. 18, come on folk, why are you so slow? But the things we proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defy the man. Uh -huh, verse 9. Out of the heart proceed what? Evil thoughts, uh-huh. Murders, uh-huh. Adulteries, uh-huh. Fornications, uh-huh. Thefts, uh-huh. And what? No, no, when you see these things, these are the things in the hearts of men that don't make their worship acceptable and received of the Lord. The Lord said their hearts are far because these are the things coming from their hearts. Because idols produce these things. Offenses, murders. You need to know many people who criticize preachers. Look at, look at the things in their hearts. Fornications. There's one folk that came to us online recently and said he came to correct us as the arrow of God. And we wanted to ask him, folk, how many souls have you won? Amazingly, no, none of us answered him. It was outsiders that were answering him. Just in case you stumble on us again, folk. We are, we are clean. We, very pure. In fact, I wanted to tell our media not to put our account details on the screen. But we, we cannot, because of you, not put the, the account details on the screen. Because we are not thieves. If we take the account details out, it means we, we are really hiding something. No. The Holy Spirit is the one that tells us what to do, not you. So, such hearts that criticize preachers, these hearts are full of bitterness. False witness. Blasphemies. Verse 20. These are the things which defile a man. When you go in a church or when you get to hear the word of God, what goes on in your heart? Because the one God that we serve, listen, you cannot hide from him. The Bible says he is the one with whom we have to do in Hebrews 4.13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So once anything that is not good comes into your heart, what do you do? Just take them out. Just say in the name of Jesus, this does not belong in my heart. In Zechariah chapter number 14, Now take this reading from verse number one. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. 
For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses riffled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. I want you to observe verse 4. The mountain will move. All right. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Can you see Zechariah saying, God will come? And when he comes, what are the things that will happen? The mountains will move. Are you still with me here? Come on, folks, you've got to be as alive as possible. You see, the, the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east, toward the west, and the, there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azar. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake. Keep going, next verse. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear, nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that what? Living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea in summer and winter. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. There shall be one Lord, and his name one. So, this is what you are hearing Allah. Buddha, Jesus, God, Shiva, uh, <laughs> one time is coming, the name of God will be one. And that's what we are talking about right now. I'm fascinated. Verse 10, quickly, let me read a few more. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place. For Je Benjamin's gate, uh, from Benjamin's gate, I beg your pardon, unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel, unto the king's wine presses. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Everybody, read verse 12. Their flesh upon their feet, uh huh, and their eyes shall consume. And their finally, verse 13, everybody, come on. Mm. You see, because of time. I love the book of Zechariah so much because whenever you want to read about the second coming of Christ and you want to learn more about the signs of the second coming of Christ, the book of Isaiah, uh, I beg your pardon, Zechariah is very important and primary. Zechariah talked about the two witnesses. Zechariah talk, talked about the, um, and you know, Zechariah is one of the prophets of restoration. You remember your, those of you who have taken fivefold ministry class? Um, Haggai, Malachi, 
and Zechariah. And, and you know, Zechariah also spoke about the rebuilding of the temple of Zerubbabel. You remember that Zerubbabel's hand started the building, he's going to finish it. You remember all that. And he spoke about the olives, the olive branches or the olives, the two olives. And amazingly, he is now prophesying about the living waters coming out from, 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 from Zion, from Jerusalem. And you know, Jesus said, when you drink from the water that I will give you, he said, you will never test again. That was what Jesus said. And Zechariah is prophesying now that there will be one God one day. There will be one name for God one day. But I want to show you in verse 4, go back to verse 4, what he said. Verse 4. He says, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and on the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Mountains are moving. Go to Revelation chapter 6. The book of Revelation chapter 6. Go to verse number 12. You know, before I read to you verse 12, let me read to you verse 9, which I'm sure life class tells you. Folk, can you, can, yeah, can you give me the word, please? Thanks. Verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled folks have you ever read these verses with any sense of seriousness that there are people who will be killed for the word of god jesus said it when they were asking him how long will you keep us here he said wait there are people who will die for the sake of the word of god when you go to churches today do you still hear things like this people are no longer told to preach they are told to keep their heads safe lay low go to the next verse and i beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of air and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell up onto the earth even as a fig tree casted on untimely figs when she's shaking of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were what why are you not talking to me now so when you are saying there will be one god one god will not be easily attained Zechariah gave you the intro that it's not going to be automatic. So as much as we continue to preach that there will be one God, there will be people who will resist it. This is our year of what? Gods. But there will be resistance. People will fight us. People will kill us. Verse 15, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. Why? Because they saw the rock moving. People don't think these things will happen. 
they will see it with their you know what Yoruba is called koro koro you will see it Zechariah said the mountains will move and that's exactly what you will see fall on us and hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand Peter said in 2nd Peter chapter 3 Second Peter chapter 3 and in verse 9 he says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to what repentance verse 10 everybody read verse 10 for me loudly and excellently do it in which with a great noise uh-huh Any difference? They will roll away the heavens, all these skies you see. They will roll them like a scroll, like a book. Things will be melting. Why? Go back to Revel uh, uh, Zechariah, Zechariah 14. Jesus, I love the truth. Are you still loving this? Yes, Father. Or you just want to hear, the Lord will protect you. <laughs> Revelation, uh, I beg your pardon, Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14. Go to verse 3 this time. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Go to Revelation this time around, chapter 19. Revelation chapter number 19 verse 11 and I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but himself the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, he that is joined unto the Lord is what? So if the Lord has a name written on him and I am joined to him, I will know the name. Yes. Say, I will know the name. The name will only not be known to those who lied about his name. You know, before the service, you was telling me that God exalts his word more than his name psalm 138 and you were telling me that pastors tell people in their churches listen if they tell you to do that look what they're doing to you call the name of jesus seven times call the name of jesus 14 times excuse me god honors his word more than his name so when you don't have his word calling his name is a waste of time His word, people will not keep in their hearts. But they want to call his name and he should answer for them. In fact, a lot of people are not even calling the name of Jesus anymore. They are just going to get a job. <laughs> you just go get a job, you will have money. Don't call Jesus again. It's like the thing is not working. <laughs> go on, go on, also. <laughs> Verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called what why are you folks not talking to me right now can you see his name is called the word of god so but people don't know the word of god so how can they know the name didn't he just say they won't know the name just now you know a lot of people don't read pro progressively he said they will know nobody knew the name but in the next verse he said it's the word of god so if you want to know the name what do you do go into the word of god but you know when it's time for preaching people just sleep but not here 
but not here. See, I miss preaching to you folks. And I'm glad to be back preaching to you. Because it's where... None of you have ever told me. None has ever told me that the word is hard. None. And thank God I'm preaching to you now. And I'm preaching to those watching online also. If you don't resist the truth. Love the truth. It's good. It takes away fornication, theft, blasphemies, murders, anger, evil thoughts. It takes it away. It takes sickness away from you. Love this word. Verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Can you see the armies? Can you see the armies? They followed him. But you know what amazed me in verse 15 was that out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Now you remember that the word of God is as a two-edged sword. You remember your Hebrews 4.12? The word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder. Can you see? Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that it might that that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded or treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Can you see that? Go to verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and what? Lord of lords. But they say people won't be able to read the name. When we say king of kings, let me tell you, I am going to practicalize this text because everybody has been made kings and priests unto our God. By who? By the Lord Jesus Christ. Say amen to that. Yeah. And if he is going to be king of kings, Mama, we've got to make kings. And we are going to make priests. As you can see here, we are going to make lords. Wait, wait. Because people read, read this verse. Look, look the verse on your screen. The king of kings is written in bold, uh, uh, um, block letters, right? And lord of what? Lords. Who will be the second set of kings? You know, he is king. We give it to him. What about the second? He will be lord. I give that to him. Who will be the lords? Say, I make them. So, I told some of you church heads to come. I told my boy, I said, come to that recording. Make this. When you are preaching to people, have this in mind to make them. Have this in mind to make people when you preach to them. Consciously make them. Once they appear before you, open your eyes in the realm of the spirits and tell them. I'm going to preach to you very soon on two things that you need daily. Every day you need two things. Once you have the two, your day is prosperous. Watch out for that day. Because we must make lords. If not, he will not be able to come as Lord. He will, he will just be Lord. Because there are no Lords. Next verse. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. They now told those, those um, birds, come and eat the flesh of kings. Can you see that these kings are different from the other set of kings? They wrote this one in small letters. Those are the fleshly kings that people go to bow to today. Kings are put on turbans with no content in the realm of the spirit. You know, it's so surprising that people will claim they are into religion of a God that does not respond. When they need the response of God, they go to get talisman. They go to get stuffs. Go, you see, an average Muslim hangs things in the house. Is that a God? 
or that's what your God needs to protect you. You didn't read about Elijah. You don't need to hang anything. Just call stuffs. <laughs> but you know, children of God are also messing things up today, especially the children on the pulpit. So-called ministers of the gospel. You know, there are these ministers of the gospel. They say, I curse Boko Haram. <laughs> With baritone voice. And Boko Haram is waxing greater. It's like the, the curse is, is a prophecy for the Boko Haram. Boko Haram is energized. Let them stop fooling people in all these big buildings. And there is no content. Nothing to change the nation. Look at the mess some of them were involved with in the last election. They were going to support a candidate of, of a certain party. And they were gathering themselves together, hobnobbing with, with corrupt people. Just because you wanted to fix another corrupt leader. And you know they all failed. A time is coming, folks. We are going to put the presidents and the governors and the kings and the commissioners and the ministers. That is what the Lord is going to have to come as. When you look what is going on in the world, you will know. You will know. One president, they just did their election in their nation to hand over. Before they hand over, the folk is dead. What are these things? Where are their ministers of the gospel? Go back to verse 17. I want you to see the connection of this. He says, and I saw an angel standing in the sun. He cried with a loud voice. Go to Acts chapter 2. Verse 16. He says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Somebody say prophesy. prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. Somebody say see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Somebody say dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Everybody read verse 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness uh -huh, and the moon into blood. Before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Go back to Zechariah 14. So you can see Zechariah said all this. Go back to verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Can you see the day of battle in Revelation 19? You've forgotten that? With the armies. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall what? Remove. You remember Revelation 6? Why are you not talking to me now? Verse, verse 5. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains. You remember that? They will say the mountains shall fall on them. You've forgotten? You see? There shall be earthquakes like the earthquake in the day of Uzziah the king. Verse 6, it shall come to pass in that day, the light shall not be clear, nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. Wait, go back to Acts 2. Is this complex? It's not complex. Go back to Acts 2. Verse 20. The sun shall be turned into what? Darkness. Didn't Zechariah say it? Before the great and notable day of the Lord come, the moon will be turned into blood. Verse 21, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Go back to Zechariah 14. Verse 7, But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. How can there be light in the evening? Because the sun and the moon have been taken out. So the light of the children or the sons of God, the light that is arising in Isaiah 60. Verse 8. Everybody read verse 8. Come on. And it shall be in that day that what? Living waters 
Somebody say, I'm the living water. I'm the living water. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Verse 9, what will happen next? As what? King of and Lord of. Are you still following? Zechariah said it all. So for you to say there will be one God, one God, one God. For there to be one God, the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord. And his name shall be. I'm telling you, we are going to end this world. The Bible says in, you've forgotten your St. Matthew's Gospel 24 and in verse 14, 13 and 14, he says in message translation, we are going to stake witnesses everywhere. And what will happen? The world will now end. Because of this anointing, I want everybody in this building to worship the Lord right now. And all of you watching us right now. That's how much time can afford us. They're telling me it's time up already. But even if it's one minute, people give God praise. I have just one minute to end now. Can you give God an emergency, intense, deliberate, simultaneous, spontaneous, Holy Ghost praise and prophesy and sing songs and give God praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Everybody give God praise. Give God praise. On this day, give God praise. Just give God praise. Glory to your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's an empowerment going on in this building right now. Everybody give God praise. There's an empowerment. You are empowered right now. King of kings and Lord of lords. Through the eternal spirit. Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You are Jehovah. Your name is great. Your name is great. Your name is great. You are Jehovah. Your name is great. Your name is great. Your holy name is great. You are my prince of life. No God compares. No God compares. Whoa, God compares. You are my own Lord, yeah, yeah. No man can help. No man can help. 
Yaloko Baya. Just one more time, everybody lift your two hands and give God a praise. No God compares. No God compares. No name. Two hands lifted. We are empowered right now. Empowered right now. All of you, people, can you receive the empowerment of the King of Kings? Of my King of Kings. Receive his empowerment. Power is given to people right now. Power to become. Power to be made a Lord. Those of you who don't know the meaning of Lord, I declare in the name of the Lord, in the next one week, the meaning of Lordship will emerge from you. Oh, hallelujah. Your body, the Lordship of God is about to take over your body. Your human spirit, I prophesy on you, prophesy. I prophesy on you, see visions. You are informed in the realm of the spirit. Somebody say hallelujah. You know, I spent a lot of overtime already. Just take your givings right now. And I prophesy in the name of the Lord. Lordship will be manifest from your finances. Wow. All of you who are into business, I prophesy, Lordship will be manifested in your businesses. All church heads hear the word of God because you know what the word of God said to you a few days ago. The Lordship of heading a church is manifest in you. Thank you, King of Kings. There's a woman watching right now. The, God, the, the, the Holy Ghost told me, he gave you instructions. Woman, why are you not following the instructions? Just follow the instructions. Don't look at what is left. Follow the instruction. He says he will strengthen the things that remain. That's his word. I wanted to read to you some St. Luke's Gospel 19, but time will not permit me. I wanted to read to you some St. Matthew's Gospel 21, but time will not permit me. But he will strengthen the things that remain because you are not alone. Glory to God forever, mother. Somebody watching God is changing your environment. We give you praise, God. Declare your finances are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. We love you with the love of Christ. You know, the government is going to give an announcement tomorrow. We are going to wait for it. Once the announcement comes, we're going to take the next step. So keep watching and we're going to give it to you. God bless you. See you. Bye bye.